Hey everybody, so today I have another breastfeeding complications video for you guys, and today we are going to be talking about oral ties. So I'm going to be going over the basics. If you don't know what they are, I'm going to fill you in on what they are. Fill you in on where you can find providers and your different options, what the implications for ties can be, signs and symptoms, and later down the line also give you my experience because both of my daughters were tied. So before I jump into any of that though, I did want to mention that I am not a medical professional. For this video, I'm strictly just trying to be informational and helpful for you guys. This is in no way trying to give you some kind of clinical recommendation or anything or try to diagnose a lip tie, tongue tie, buckle tie, whatever. Also, while I am a certified breastfeeding specialist, it is imperative that you go and find a local IBCLC near you to get hands-on help. I'm going to have a link down in the description box for you guys to find a local IBCLC, and it is international. So whether you live in Europe or you live in the United States like myself or anywhere in between, you should be able to use this search bar and find one closest to you. And lastly, I did want to say just with anything, you don't really want to self-diagnose, you know, if you feel like this may be a problem after watching this video for you and your infant or toddler, you know, whatever age your child is, I highly recommend seeing either a pediatric dentist, an ENT, I will have a provider list, a preferred provider list. It is recommendations based off of people who have had children go through this. So I'm going to have another link for you guys to find preferred providers near yourself because I'm not here to tell you whether or not your child has a tie. I'm not going to tell you how to diagnose it at home. I am not here to tell you if you should revise it or if you shouldn't. That is entirely up to you and the medical professional team that you have behind you. So with that being said, I'm going to go over some information about the ties first and like I said my experience afterwards. So what are oral ties? While there are different versions and different severities of each of these ties, it basically comes down to three different oral ties. That is lip, tongue, and buckle or also known as cheek. So these ties happen whenever the lip, tongue, or cheek has restricted movement because of a band of tissue that's attaching to those parts of the mouth to a different part of the mouth. It's very important that you know that normally everyone does have some kind of labial or lingual frenulum, which means that little band of tissue, pretty much everybody has one. It's not necessarily the placement you want to be concerned about, it's whether or not and how much it may restrict the movement of said part of mouth. Now, what could these different oral ties mean? And I say could because there are children who do have ties and they have absolutely no complications or implications from them at all. They can go on to have none of these issues that I'm about to state. So just because your child has one doesn't mean that they're going to have said things on the list and even if they do have one of them it doesn't mean they're going to have all of them so the different things that can happen is there can be breastfeeding difficulty i'll get over specifics here in a second and then there's speech difficulty also oral hygiene complications and then challenges in other oral movements whether that's eating ice cream kissing whistling playing an instrument, stuff like that. And then there's also the cosmetic implication where, you know, there might be a gap tooth if they have a lip tie. Now, as far as the breastfeeding complications go, I have a list of symptoms for both mom and baby. Again, some of these can be not necessarily implications of a tie. So that's why it's important if you notice these signs and symptoms, if you're noticing that I'm saying things that are just kind of ringing a bell in your head, they sound familiar to your specific situation. It's important that you check out the preferred provider list that I'm going to put down in the Dropbox for you so you can get a professional's opinion as well. So as for the breastfeeding complications that a mom could experience while breastfeeding a tied baby, there could be decreased milk supply, bleeding or cracked nipples, clogged ducts, pain while nursing, misshapen nipples, and thrush and mastitis. And I scooted over so I could just put a list right here in case you just want to screenshot this and you can keep it handy. So as far as baby symptoms go, there could be poor milk transfer, which means they're not emptying your breast, they're not getting enough, things like that. Difficulty latching, gumming or chewing your nipples, 
gassy, poor weight gain, milk leaking from the corners of their mouth while they are nursing, clicking noises while feeding, and choking and popping off the breast while eating, and also reflux. And again, I'm just going to put that list there again if you want to screenshot it. But those are all the different signs and symptoms that you may have a tired baby on your hands. Again, just because they are experiencing one of those things does not definitely mean that there's a tie, but I would try to jot down the symptoms that you have in the case that you go see an ENT or a pediatric dentist. That way you can give them the symptoms that both of you have been experiencing. That way they can also better understand what's going on. And also, even if you go see an ENT or a pediatric dentist, I would highly recommend you also get an IBCLC on board because they can help you specifically with the breastfeeding relationship. Whatever you might end up doing, whether it is exclusively pumping, nursing, you want to do a combination of both, you know, whatever you need with your tied baby involved, it's just going to help a lot. Some of the preferred providers may be educated on things to do with lactation and ties and stuff like that, but no one's going to have quite the extensive knowledge as an IBCLC. So that's why I'm putting that link down there for you guys. And as far as your options when it comes to the ties, you can have a phrenectomy done and that is when they're going to use local anesthetic to numb the area and then they are going to release the band either with scissors or laser and you're just going to have to ask your provider whatever they use because it's going to vary from person to person. I'm not really going to go over the pros and cons because I personally don't have experience, but if you want to, I'm going to link a Facebook group down below and they could give you more extensive knowledge because a lot of them have first-hand experience of scissors versus laser. With the phrenectomy, you're also going to have minimal bleeding and you can breastfeed right after. Whenever this is all completed, you can feel free to go ahead and breastfeed. There's also the frenuplasty. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it is a surgical alteration of interconnected tissues and it requires general anesthesia, so your child would actually be put under. But this is really for more complicated situations. This is not the norm. Most people if they do get a revision do the phrenectomy but I did want to mention it so it's just not totally out of left field in case your child is having a lot of complications with the oral ties I did want to mention the frenuplasty hopefully I'm saying that right and lastly you also have the option of having no revision at all those are your different options as of right now. Like I said, time and time again, I'm going to have the links to the IBCLC and preferred provider list so you can find one near you. And that's basically all I have for ties. That's all the basic information that I can give you guys about them that I feel like would be helpful, maybe educate you a little bit more, know for things to look for just kind of know the steps going ahead here if you're worried about it. But now I wanted to kind of go on to my personal experience because like I said, both my daughters were tied. So starting off with my oldest daughter, Sophie, right off the bat, nursing Sophie was excruciating. Tons and tons of pain. I had quite a few lactation consultants tell me that it looked like I had a perfect latch and Thinking back to it, looking from the outside, yes, certainly, it looked like I had a perfect latch, but I was in an excruciating amount, of, excruciating amount of pain to the point where I would be crying while nursing, and also my nipples were bleeding and cracked. I think a lot of people think bleeding or cracked nipples is a normal thing. They are not. Sore nipples, being uncomfortable while nursing at first, is totally normal. Your boobs are doing something different, but... Bleeding and cracked nipples are never a good sign. Whether that means your latch is off or whatever else it could be, it, it's not a good sign. So that in and of itself is not a good indication that things are going well. And also pair with that, Sophie never seems satisfied after nursing. Kids who are breastfeeding in general, they can cluster feed to bring the milk supply in that they need. They can also just comfort nurse, obviously for comfort. You know, so it's not unusual for children to want to nurse more at certain times and stuff. But it wasn't just the fact that she constantly wanted to nurse. It was also paired with the fact that she seemed hungry afterwards like she was rooting and also she was not having the correct number of dirty diapers a day so I knew something was off. She also would latch really well but there would be a constant clicking noise and it was really loud like it was noticeable from literally the first day I had her and she was nursing and also she was super gassy. It seemed like no matter what we did helped and you'll learn later down the line why that was. 
but basically I ended up deciding to exclusively pump. Both of my nipples ended up being cracked beyond what I thought was repair, but they did heal with time. And I just needed a break. My breasts really needed a break. They were sore. I was exhausted. I was in a lot of pain. Sophie was really frustrated. So I decided to exclusively pump. That way she could still get breast milk and my boobs could have a break and maybe everybody would be satisfied. And with that, with being able to pump, give her the correct amount of ounces for her weight and her age, she was satisfied. That filled the whole her being continuously hungry because she wasn't transferring enough. But we still had the clicking and the gassiness. So we took her to a pediatric dentist who diagnosed her with a class 4 lip tie. And because of that, we got a bottle that was more narrow-necked for her. Because the wide bottles just did not allow with the lip tie for her to get a proper latch. So with this narrow neck bottle she was able to get her mouth around it the right way it made the clicking go away instantaneously and the gassiness also went away because with her being able to correctly latch on the bottle she didn't have these open pockets with her mouth allowing a whole bunch of extra air to get in and unfortunately with our dental insurance even with Sophie being on it they did not cover any kind of tire visions we were told that we could pay out of pocket for it but it was quoted to be around two thousand dollars so Fast forward to having Remy, I'm a little bit more educated in ties, I'm a little bit more educated in breastfeeding, I kind of know what to expect, and right off the bat from having Remy, it was a totally different experience, it did not, it, there was no pain with Remy. Like I said, I was sore and I was uncomfortable, but again, it was totally normal after having about almost a year of no breastfeeding in between her and Sophie, so soreness and discomfort is fine for the first several weeks but I did notice it was more complicated to feed her on one side than the other I also noticed that my nipples were misshapen I also noticed that Remy wanted to chew on my nipples a lot which would drive me crazy <laughs> and also with that whenever she would cry her tongue would be almost like in a cup shape everything just kind of looked like a little bowl inside of her mouth and that right away I remember hearing and it clicked so we immediately took her to a pediatric dentist once we noticed that and in the midst of all that before Remy was even born, I had made the decision that I eventually wanted to transition to exclusively pumping again. Just as a personal preference, it had nothing to do with the complications we were having. So I decided to do that. I think with some work and maybe even a revision, we could have had a nursing relationship had I wanted one. But my personal decision was to exclusively pump. So I was doing that. But we took her to a pediatric dentist, like I said. They diagnosed her with a type 3 tongue tie, and again, our insurance would not pay for a revision, and again, we were quoted the $2,000 price tag for doing a revision out of pocket, and that is bringing us to where we are today. Thankfully, neither of our girls have had any kind of speech or any of the other complications. Sophie does have a gap, but quite frankly, my sister also had a gap. I had a gap for a while. You know, gaps can be very normal. It's not something that just presents in tied children. So if there's a chance that it may close up, that's not really something I'm worried about. You know, if it comes down the line later in her life that she is worried about it, of course, we'll take care of it for her. I did want to mention that we are really strict with the girl's oral hygiene ever since taking Sophie to the pediatric dentist to get her diagnosed. She told us over and over again how important it was to make sure that we were brushing Sophie's teeth correctly the right way. We had to flange her lip every single time we had to brush her teeth because her lip tie was so tight. It really made brushing her teeth very difficult and with a lip tie it can create these pockets that just allow for food, drink, whatever to sit right on the teeth. It makes them kind of prone to the oral hygiene that I mentioned, just complications whether it's cavities, tooth decay, stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you're really on top of the oral hygiene but if you're going to a pediatric dentist they're going to tell you that. You know they're going to stress the importance of that but 
with both the girls both being tied because even with a tongue tie it can prevent you from getting all the food in whatever residue out of your mouth from around your teeth so there's implications no matter if you have a cheek tongue or lip tie baby so you want to make sure you're on top of that oral hygiene and like I said fortunately the girls have not had any speech implications or any other implications that we have seen or doctors have noticed so we are very thankful for that and that's basically our personal experience with it I haven't had any kids with cheek ties yet but I know that is something that people do have revised and it has been coming out more and more often but I did want to put this video together it was recommended by one of my subscribers I thought it was brilliant I know me personally I couldn't find a whole lot of information about ties but I'm going to link you to as many helpful articles the Facebook group but if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments below I'll do my best to answer them but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching